But, I mean, speaking of Spain, because you mentioned the Welter, uh, the Tour of Basque Country is coming this week. Jonas Bingo is back in racing, everyone's favourite Dane, and uh, he won last year. How how can you stop Jonas Bingo from winning? <laughs> um, the park also isn't actually that hard, dare I say. There's no actual hilltop in it anywhere in the whole race, which I think is a big advantage to anybody who is wanting to be young. Starts off with a TT, starts immediately screaming, you have to go with me. Although Jonas is very good at a TT, must be said. Or I don't know if they're bringing a shower. I'm not sure if there's a bit down or whatever. But that was a whole thing. What did you call it? The shower helmet? The, the shark helmet. The not shower like helmet? Awful, <laughs> yeah. like, like weird thing <laughs> on my head. I mean, shower helmet is funny as well. The shower shark helmet. Um, I, d- I think, honestly, the way to beat him is do a TT that's at least similar, if not ideally a little bit faster than him. And then just beat him, just roll him for bonus seconds on every stage, apart from the last one where there's the biggest threat of him doing well because it's lots of repeated climbs and just try and hang on. I think that's a pretty realistic goal for somebody, basically, Rasko, to try and beat it. I haven't seen the profile, so I can't comment on that. I have not looked at the profile yet. I would love to see Jonas versus Remco in more time trials because the the two that come to mind for me, Remco's Giro time trial last year, one of the most incredible time trials I've ever seen. Unbelievable. Like, I, is it, he put whatever. Which one did it? The first, the, the stage the first one, the first one, when he smoked Ghana, he, I think he gave 45 seconds or whatever to Ghana and everyone was like, well, we all might as well pack up and go home. This is going to be a boring Giro. And then obviously he got COVID, had to abandon the Giro and then everybody forgets about that performance, but that was unreal. And then Jonas's time trial in the tour where he gave it to Poggy, that like, those are some of the two most impressive things I've ever seen on a bike. I'm like, I want to see them go head to head more often because I don't think I don't think you can pick like Remco gets more credit for it, but Jonas is not slow in the time trial. I'd really like to see them go head to head. The weird helmets didn't work though in Torino. Yeah. You could you could say that, but I d I don't think that course was massively suited to Jonas. It's just a flat. Or at least this one in Basque country is a little bit rolling in areas of it. Yeah, I just don't think there's that many stages that suit Jonas. This race it's like only the last stage where he can really make a difference. Where there's like a 4k, 5k, 9% climb, and that's where he could do something for sure. But all the other ones are quite flat finishes and they're more suited towards a puncher. So that's why I see it being quite difficult, or that's why I see it being easier to beat you know, There's less terrain that helps him. So I think that it's going to be a really interesting race. And I think that it's not just going to be the big GC players doing it all the time. And we haven't even mentioned Rock. I mean, of course, he capitulated big time in Paranese. So much so that I rescinded his, his membership from the Galacticos. <laughs> Long to it we have. But I don't know. Roglic, do we think he could contest Jonas as well? Or do we think that it's literally just Rasko? Think just Remco. I mean, yeah. Jorna has actually helped Roglic win the Tour of Basque Country a few years ago, where he was man marking Tadugacha. Yeah, I don't think uh, he's gonna. Yeah, I think he's gonna put his idol to the sword. I trust Roglic less than yeah, less by the year to like execute a decent GC performance. He might be fine at the tour, but I just um, that Paradise is really lingering in my mind to back Roglic for this. I think Jack's right. I think. I think it's Ramco who's going to be the young person who could beat Jonas in this race. The thing I'm most interested to see is Jonas made such a big step up last year compared to the year before. I want to see if he's now gone up and like how close is he with Remco? Like you're saying, like it's not a course that favors him. Well, if he's contending for that and he stepped up again and it's like, well, it's going to be a pretty boring Tour de France if he gets a smooth ride there. Like he was yeah. already the best climber in the world. Yeah, quite easily by far last year. If he's gone up another level, and like you said, if Roglic hasn't gone up another level, uh, you know, you just pack up now. End of the season. 
Well, I don't know because like, has Bora announced their team for the tour? Because they have a lot of guys that are can top five. They have a lot of guys that can podium mm. tour. We've got a, I meant to say a provisional, but it's a bit of a weird one. It's like Rocklet, Henley, Hinsley, Blastol. And they've been like some sprints in there, like Van Poppel's in there as well. It's kind of like a weird, it's a bit of a weird team. That'll be one of my favorite teams to watch at the tour this year. I really want to see what Bora does. I think so. Here great. it is: Matteo Sobrero, Danny Martinez, Nico Dance, Danny Van Poppel, Alexander Blazov, Jai Hindley, Primoz Roglic, Bob Jungles, and Leonard Kemnet. So that's the long list. That's a good team, I like. Yeah, it's it's an interesting team for sure. Like Jack said, one to watch mm-hmm. for sure. But yeah, Mancho Van Poppel isn't down on the start line uh, for Tour de France right now. Yeah, I love what's happening between now and July. You're saying Jonas has you want to see more evolved as a rider? If he has, I mean, this year at Gran Camino, he was running absolutely riot with everyone, descending crazy as well. I've never seen him descending like that as well, and just seemed to attack any point where it went up. The thing that impressed me the most, like this is again, we're not, I'm not talking about recent races here, but one of the things that impressed me the most about Jonas is like his ability just to execute the race so well like the thing that impresses me so much about that time trial last year in the Tour de France I think he had already put like 5 to 8 seconds on Poggy in the first 2 kilometers of, like just from corners yeah, pure exactly. cornering on it you, like you saw him on rails on these corners like just how much he'd studied the course clearly to do it is incredible and yeah, that is so scary he's like he is a full on GC animal he is just the person you do not want to be coming up against. Which is why Basque and Jeffing did so interesting to see him and Remco get, we get a little bit of a gauge at the tour as to how things are shaping up. And I think it is going to be those two who are really going to be fighting out for the victory. But, I mean, like, even, I mean, I've even mentioned the user. The user did put time into Jonas in the Terreno time trial. And he's quite fast in the finish, so I think that a user could get a look in as somebody who could get bonus seconds and maybe beat Jonas in the TT. He could be that third person on the podium, and that's probably that's like that's kind of like a bit of a long shot for somebody who might be able to beat Jonas. Are but, you so? Yeah. No. Even, I, I think that's that's too much of giving him credit for like. This is what I really don't like about something is uh, people giving too much credit to young riders for their Aww. potential of what they could become. It is like maybe it. <laughs> like the great, yeah, the balloons I know, right? But like th- this drives me crazy when it's like, in, in my opinion, if we were to stop cycling right now, who is the best cyclist in the world? Matthew Vanderpool, I think. But like if you look at the results that he actually has, it's Matthew Vanderpool and Pogachar are in a le- like they are not on the same level as the net like they get grouped in with Wout Van Aert, Pedersen, uh like the, this whole other group of guys. Those two, their results are far ahead of everybody else's. I think a <laughs> lot of other guys get given credit for like their potential because they have like similar results, but they're three or four years younger. And so people just assume they're gonna be that much better. It's like well, Vanderpool's actually backed up the results. Like, he actually has been stacking these results for his entire career versus, like, remember when people were saying, and it's terrible what happened to him, but what uh, people were saying Bernal's going to win 10 tours. Mm. Right? Like, when he won his first Tour de France, everyone's like, he's going to win 10. And it's like, well, okay, maybe, but, like, do you keep the, do you actually live up to that potential? Vanderpool actually has. Pogachar actually, I mean, Pogachar, Flanders, Tour de France, like, I don't know anyone else is doing that but i i'm very hesitant to give guys too much credit based on perceived potential i mean third at the the world to as a 20 year old so amazing but versus winning or beating Jonas the tour the tour is a different animal and it's like it's also winning a grand tour like i'd give it to remco first before i use so okay that's an interesting one 